Hello, everybody. This is Peter Goldstein, founder of We Did It That Health, and I am so excited to be here with you again today uh, with another wonderful guest uh, that I'll bring on in a minute. But first, let me tell you for a second what it is that we're about, in case you don't know. So our mission is to support the grassroots ambassadors, the consumers, and the plant-based movements, and to support us all with inspiring so that we can inspire hopeful curiosity with our friends, our loved ones, with anybody we meet through our day. So our key is to inspire learning how to inspire learning the communication skills, the strategies, hopeful curiosity, because there's so much hope in being plan-based and, and it's it will make such a difference in the world once, once everybody's plan-based, we can reverse reverse chronic diseases, we can reverse climate change, we certainly can do so much for animal compassion and animal lives. So thank you so very much for joining us. And with that, I'm going to welcome Rebecca Allen, who's our special guest today. And she's going to talk about uh, food and world hunger. And they have a solution for world hunger. They have a community, Food Healers. And our theme this month is about community, the importance of community. Uh, last week, we had some uh, Plan Pure Community pods with Dr. S Sally Lipsky, uh, and it was wonderful. If you haven't seen it, please watch it on our YouTube channel, and please subscribe and join us for so many wonderful guests that we keep coming on. So with that, I would like to welcome Rebecca Allen, who also goes by BJ to her friends. And welcome, Rebecca. And please tell everybody about your background, your passion, your mission. I know you're doing wonderful things to, to help feed the world. Thank you so much. What an honor to be here, Peter. I live in Central Texas, and I have been vegan for 11 years. And as you know, and any vegan knows, once you realize uh, what's going on in the world about the food systems, your eyes are opened. And uh, melodies of joy spring from your heart to, to want to be a part of this beautiful new way that life could be. Although you're also very aware of the, the sadness, you know, the destruction. There's such possibilities with this new way that I have been working in um, animal rights, human rights, environmental uh, activities for many years. And when I discovered Climate Healers with Dr. Silas Rao, the founder, we began to discuss what are the ways that we can impact and help our climate, and uh, which would also help people and animals. You know, we want to heal the earth in many ways. And, and so what we came up with was, what Dr. Rao came up with, and he's a systems analyst, so he said, healing the earth with food is really the grassroots way that we can do this in a community, in a community way. And I'm so glad to hear about your uh, theme being about communities because that is the way we impact people. And it can be fun to, to interact with people. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't have to always be sad. We know we look at the gloom and groom, <laughs> groom, when we look at the doom of the possibilities of where we could go, it's so much more, invigorating to move toward the things that could be better and so that's what we're working on with food healers we are uh, we are working with people to serve communities healthy plant-based foods for free and that's our that's our major project um there's so many ways you know just like not hitting somebody uh, there's a lot of good consequences from not hitting somebody. Well, the same thing with providing free food. There's a lot of great consequences by providing uh, great food. Did you have a question at this point? <laughs> well, I would love to add that. Uh, well, I would like to invite everybody in our audience to pose their questions, and I would like to to welcome everybody there. Uh, I uh, would you talk about the event that you had last fall? You had you, you had an amazing global event, and tell everybody about it, and tell us if you when you're going to have it again. Excellent. Well, right now, last fall, November nineteenth, we had World Food Healers Day, and this is where we provided food 
free veggie plant-based food, uh, no dairy, you know, anything like that, all around the world. So we had people in Australia, we had people in India serving thousands of people a day. And where they originally did serve vegetarian food, they are now moving um, langer by langer, group by group, to stop with the ghee and make it uh, totally plant-based. We had um, people in New York City, Houston, Texas, in my hometown. I'm going to show some uh, visuals of some of the people who have done the food healers. Now we're doing it every third. Uh, some of the groups are doing it every third Sunday. Uh, so we really want it to, we wanted that to be initiating our, our, our passion for doing this more than just once a year. So we will be doing it again in the fall, but we are also helping people. Let's do this monthly. Let's do this weekly. And wouldn't it be great if every community had a place where you could go get your food? It would save money. It would save time. It would bring uh, people together. And we have places that are doing that. That's beautiful. There, there's so many, so many outreach centers with that serve food to people in need, and and of course, so much of it is not healthy food. So what we haven't said yet, and I suppose it's implied, and and you you're correct if you're assuming that we are all about being plant based. So whole food, plant based. Um, minimal or no processing as as fresh as possible no animal products so this is this is amazing so it's not just feeding people not just feeding people junk food or or terrible processed food but this is really feeling feeding healthy food so um uh, rebecca abj I know that this will be on your slides, but if you, I'm sure you can't share it enough times. Where could somebody get more information? I know you guys have recipes and all kinds of things. Yes. If uh, one types in the search climate healers, food healers, um, or if you just go to climatehealers.org, under the tab transform, because that's what we're doing. We're transforming the world uh, that wants to move forward. And then you'll find food healers and you'll find a lot of information there. But also at Climate Healers, there's a calendar under For You, that's another tab for you, there's a calendar. And we meet on Fridays in the morning and the evening so that people can from around the world find a time to meet. So that is one way that we, we try to have somebody there. You can also contact me at bjavegan, uh, bjavegan at gmail.com. And then if you're interested in a particular area, I can invite people to be there that day. So those are two very good ways. But another way is we have quarterly conferences, vegan convergence of the peoples. And that our next one is April 28, I mean, April 29 and April 30th. And we talk about food healing. We have climate scientists, we have engineers, we have regular people and what they've done that we want to uplift and share. So that will be coming up and you can look at that at um, bit.ly forward slash V dash COP. Or you can go to Climate Healers. Climate Healers is our, our go-to place. Absolutely. And, and of course, you can keep an eye on our social media and we're going to certainly be promoting it so you can find it with us. And, and as long as I'm talking about it, we're in process of launching a platform, a community platform, and we haven't really talked a whole lot about it. But uh, in there, we will have what we're calling passion pods and climate food healers and hopefully climate healers will be pods. So there will be another resource source another source for information and and we'll tell you so much more about it later uh, so uh junk plant let's see so deb thompson has a comment i'd like to share here junk plant-based vegan food is more expensive than healthy whole food plant-based ingredients as well absolutely deb thanks for that um and, that's and so cool. okay. I'm sorry, uh, Jen had, uh, how do you spell it? I-T is how you spell it. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, I know you're not as much a wise guy as I am, so would you please answer that? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Uh, let's see. I, I'm not sure for sh what she's speaking of, so it might be uh, V-COP, uh, food healers. You know how to spell food and healers. So I'm really not sure which, uh, which thing. Uh, climatehealers.org. That's one of the places. Uh, thank you, Jen, for asking. I'm sorry. I can't remember exactly which thing was last said. The website, she's saying. Um... Okay, the website. Okay. That is climate, C-L-I-M-A-T-E-H-E-A-L-E-R-S dot O-R-G. And yes, there, and I put that in the chat here. Excellent. And then transform, T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M. I'm afraid my enunciation may not be clear. So thank you for asking. And in terms of providing food, although we are all thrilled, yay, there's more vegan food at the restaurant, more you know, sugary desserts and more oily foods. We are thrilled about that in one sense, but on the other sense, we also know vegans uh, want to be healthy and we want uh, our friends and community to be healthy. And so Food Healers does avoid added sugars and added oils. And we also avoid the top nine allergens. And we got this information from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. PCRM is our nickname for them. And you can look that up under Universal Meals. Universal Meals, PCRM, and their mission, they have a lot of missions. They're doing great work. There's over uh, there's over 100,000 members, I believe, at this point. Thousands of physicians support this Food Healers Unity Stew because it is so healthy and it, it covers everything you need in a, in a meal. Uh, well, it's wonderful. That's beautiful. Will you be sharing that recipe? Can people get that recipe somehow? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yes, yes, yes sure. they can get it on the website, but it's also in my slides so they could pause it. Perfect. Yes. All right. Excellent. So with that, would you like to show, go through your slides? Are yes. you ready to? Yes, I'll be glad to. Perfect. Okay, so this is Vega the cow, and she is so pleased that we are not eating her and her friends and family. And so that's why we have Vega the cow on here. And this is about how to begin uh, this process. And what we want to do is serve regularly delicious, healthy vegan meals. And so we started with the one-time event. Um, and the Unity Stew, here are the nine allergens that are avoided, all animal products. And in addition, tree nuts, peanuts, sesame seeds, which I didn't realize so many people were allergic to, gluten, soy, and alcohol. And of course, animals include shell, shellfish and fish. Uh, but these, these help us to be more inclusive because when, you, when you're feeding thousands of people or hundreds or even your neighborhood, we want to make sure that as many people as possible can come. So I know you've heard people say, I'd be vegan, but I can't eat soy. Well, there are a lot of things to eat besides soy. And so that's one of the reasons. Also, this is more open to most of the religions in the world. So this is inclusive to Muslims and Jewish people and Buddhism. And, um, and the recipe can made, be made easily for Jainism and everybody. And vegans can have this food. So that's, that's how it starts. Um, it, this is where we first started it, and this was due to Sarah Siegel out of L.A. So if you're in the L.A. area, you'll want to get in touch with uh, me to get in touch with her or come to our meetings. And they started serving about 50 people, and now they're at about 500 people, and they go to the park. And their idea was to make it fun. So they have music. They have people volunteering to bring other things. But theirs is all free vegan food. And they don't ask. Nobody, none of us ask for donations, although we accept donations because we don't want people to feel obligated to participate. So if somebody asks, yes, we take a donation, but we're, we're not going to be saying asking for donations. So this is kind of what it looks like there. And believe me, there's a lot of partying and dancing there. Then we have Dr. Silas Rao, who has a whole other style of food healers. And that is, he provided for a while, he's in India now, but weekly he would provide uh, whole plant-based foods to the poor in, in that area. But it is delicious enough, any, everybody would want to eat it. So that is his family in Arizona. 
serving food. Then we have Dante in Ghana, who participated in Food Healers in the fall. And so if anybody is interested in a contact there, let us know. We have Valilar groups in India, a lot of them who serve, they're used to serving uh, lots of people. I mean, their vats are as wide as I am tall. So they have a lot of food and they're familiar with how to do this, serving large groups. And, and not all of them are plant-based, but more and more of them are. Some of the leaders are helping them move to totally plant-based. So we're just thrilled about that. Uh, and then we have um, Mareg in Ethiopia, Mareg Zudu, and he um, and I are working together. We're looking for more people to help with us. He's done a marvelous job getting his church together, and then he does little classes, um, but we also serve uh, free vegan food on uh, World Food Healers Day, so we're still in the process of growing that. Uh, Allison Hanji, oh my gosh. So what she did was she looked at the communities that were already there. And Peru has 13,000 community kitchens already. And that's the largest number of community kitchens in the world. And so what she did is she went to the community kitchens and found out that there are some that are plant-based and there's a group of activist vegans who are helping the other 25,000 go plant-based. More and more people are realizing that it is healthier, that it makes sense environmentally, that there's less cross-contamination, that we're less likely to have pandemics um, and climate change. So whatever level people are interested in, we, we follow their passion. And right now they have 13 that are vegan. Feel free to stop me if you have a question. <laughs> uh, now this is me in Little Lockhart, Texas. This is a town of 14,000. And what, what I did was I just had a couple of friends who shared the passion of where this world could be if we were plant-based. And then more and more people joined us. We had about 10 volunteers. We created a delicious unity stew. And there are challenges sometimes. We wanted to serve it at a senior citizen's place, but they weren't interested in having us use the kitchen. We wanted to serve it in the park, but there were some uh, things there that held us back. We had a church that said, oh, you can use ours. And then they found out that it was going to be open to all religions. So it was kind of funny. So they backed out on us at the last minute. And so what did we do? We don't give up. We served it right in my front yard. So it worked out great. And although we didn't serve very many people that day because it was 30 degrees outside and uh, no, it was in the 20s, and there were two other free events that day. What we did was we found a lot of joy in working together and we found out how we could do it. And so what we've done now is expanded to our next one. Let me see. Uh, and so what we did next was I checked with the, our Unitarian Church about can we serve food to the houseless people at a local community center? and let's do the universal meal. And we had had experience that. And so some of these people joined in. And so now we're serving monthly at our, with our church group being the volunteers. Now our church is not necessarily vegan or vegetarian, but I want to tell you one of the tips. You, you nurture your relationships with the people that you are bonded with, that you love and care about, and you grow to love. And then they want to support you and your passion, just like you want to support them in their passion. And the best way to get a, a community, a church group, uh, a local League of Women Voters or any kind of group is to offer to bring the food. And it's hard to turn down a free food. So we offered, the community center accepted it, and we made 50 servings worth of the stew that took two of us making 25 servings. Now we've uh, decided to make three people, uh, to ask three people to bring 15 servings. It'll be a lot easier for each person. Um, and oh my gosh, the response was incredible. We had nobody complain about no meat. Every single person that said something said, this is fantastic. Uh, we had it there. They came back for two, three, and four servings of it. There was a lot of uh, junk food that they had also, I say junk food, let me just say some food that was unhealthy that was available to them, but they kept coming back to the stew. 
let's see here. Now, at our first event, what we did was we provided the Immune Boosting Unity Stew template. And you, you probably can't see it close up here, but it says two cups of soaked legumes. It doesn't say which legumes, so you can use lentils or green bean uh, or black beans or anything you want that you think your community would enjoy. So this is a template like that. You get to pick which vegetables. If you uh, And there's about six things that you would want to have in your stew. You want to have a rice. You want to have a starchy vegetable like carrots or or something, butternut squash, squashes. You want to have a leafy green. You want to have uh, tomatoes or some base, like a, either a mushroom or a tomato base. And you want to have an allium, like maybe your uh, onions or spring, those kinds of things. And then you have your spices. And also what people are surprised about is we add a fruit. So you can have lemon juice, lime juice, and thanks to Dr. Rao trying it out, I tried it too, and our last one had pears in ours. So we cooked the pears, you could do apples, and that gives you a wider range of nutrients. We decided to also show people what we had for the day. So although that's the template, what we used that day was over on the right. Uh, here's what it looks like in text form, and I just took a picture of this off the website. Uh, barley, we realized it has gluten, so we don't use that anymore, and I think it's probably been updated since I took this picture. So how do we begin? Well, first, have fun and share your excitement. Maybe show some videos of some things that you uh, love with your friends and your family. Make the stew. I must have made uh, four or five stews to take to my friends that I wanted to be involved. So you take the stew and they say, oh, a little more spice. Or somebody says, no, more tomatoes. So they're involved then. And it's more fun for them. So that's the first two steps is have fun. Share your enthusiasm with your friends and family. Find a location. And that sometimes can be a challenge. But like I say, maybe even a, a friend Haytham has considered serving it at his apartment complex where they have places where we can serve. So we're, we're, we've got lots of possibilities out here. You may want to get a food handler's license. So in the, in the United States, each state has a food handler's uh, place. It may take an hour or two to take the test. It costs from $6 to 70, depending on the state. It's not necessary, but it does help if somebody, you know, asks a question. It's helped um, the food healers in L.A. when they said, look, we're not serving meat, dairy, and eggs, so we have little chance of growth. We're only here for a little bit, and we have our food handler's license. So they were like, okay. Um, and then I would say check out the Universal Meals website with PCRM. They have posters and printouts. Um, you can ask. You're always welcome to ask me. Um, and then I wanted to say also that our church decided to use something called Sign Up Genius. So I'm not I'm not sure I would do it for a, our larger community, but for our church group where we have a mailing list, you know, they can just sign up, put their email in, and we know who's coming on which which day, and then be there to support them until it gets going and rolling, and always have a plant based eater there. Which by the way, you don't have to be vegan or plant-based to be involved in this. And people then uh, and have started um, raising their aspirations. Uh, like I say, your your test your taste buds change. Your, you see whole new vistas uh, of joy when we when we open up to open up our minds. Uh, one of the things that uh, Allison did and others have done is you volunteer at other events. We have a dolly who went to a Food Not Bombs event and served plant-based stew. Some Food Not Bombs are totally plant-based and some are not. So you volunteer at a place, uh, get to know the people and, and find ways to help them, uh, if they're interested, move forward. Uh, use the template, enjoy the variety. Make your own stew. Like you may already have a vegetable stew that you like, but just make sure that it, it avoids those top nine allergens, avoids oil and sugar. Um, and I think, you know, you'll be wonderful. So it's got lots of, uh, and add any missing ingredients because your, may, your main uh, vegetable stew may not have a grain in it, but we want to have the grain there so people don't have to feel like they have to provide bread 
or crackers, the, you know, that may or may not be healthy. So we have everything in one bowl. It makes it very simple. Uh, one of the things that we do also is when we're serving it, we don't make it like for my taste, I like very spicy, but for the general public, we're not going to make it as spicy. We're going to have the spices where you can add them in. So we have some sauces that people can add more. We had salt and pepper out for people can add more for people who don't need salt. So we have those things there for people to add as separately. And um, if you want to go big, there's a, you can go to uh, Facebook climate healers and on any Facebook page, you know, they have that search button you can type in Varun in the search field. And I hope that he gets to be at, at one of your, I hope you get to speak with him sometime because he started small and now he's serving thousands of people in LA. And so he's, he's a wonderful person who is willing to help people grow or begin uh, of feeding people plant-based. So here are the links. Uh, please feel free to contact me. We also meet on Fridays, as I mentioned before on zoom, but sometimes, People don't show up, so it's because it's just when you want to come. So if you um, if you want to meet people and get started, let me know, and we'll we'll invite people. All right. Any questions from the audience, or you, uh, Peter? Oops. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, and thank you for a wonderful presentation. Uh, we do have a couple of comments. Uh, Jen, Judd, Dawn, and James, which I, I think are multiple people. I, I, um, they commented they love your commitment of not giving up. Yes, it's such a beautiful thing, and it's as they also said, it's so great to give it away for free because it's such a great way to introduce people to know how excellent plant-based food can be to help them feel comf comfortable to start their own journey. Yes, yeah, so so uh, Jen, you're referring to to other other areas too. And of course, um, what what um, Rebecca is, is doing here is giving away the food. She's, I think, mostly focused on the low income parts of, of our of our world and that's where it's been so significant but Jen you're absolutely right to to start anybody uh, to be interested in a in a plant-based lifestyle giving them food is very powerful um, we have another question and I wish I knew who this was it's just as Facebook user can you define community kitchens who who sets them up uh, I, I, yeah, please talk about that a little bit because it's, we, we all, I think all of us, we have opportunities to get involved, to, to catalyze, to drop some seeds, to, to invite people who are doing community kitchens uh, to, to add a healthy option to, to their work. And of course, this is so cost effective. So all of them are looking to save money for sure. And, the, and with that, the bonus, of course, is being healthy and, and being so good for animal compassion and for the climate. Yes, uh, thank you, Peter, and thank you for that question. I, you know, I would just uh, come up with a general definition, probably similar to yours. It could be very different in different places. For instance, in Peru, the community kitch kitchens are are not set up by the government; they're set up by the communities. It is some tradition that they have of feeding each other. So they uh, will sometimes have one house that everybody cooks for and everybody gets to eat there. And then the next house, the next week. So they have a, a different kind of tradition than say over here where we might get the city to, to help support a community kitchen. We had a speaker at the last convergence, Sarah Bentley from the United Kingdom who got grants to start a community kitchen. And oh my gosh, her presentation is wonderful too because she had, she decided to add cooking classes to it. And so this was from the low income to the high income. Anybody could come and she showed how to cook. And then they had community meals there. Um, I, 
we have somebody who is planning to have a community kitchen in Lockhart and I don't know where they're getting their money, but of course, you know, I want to be in touch with them about providing food. The only thing is, I think the location is going to be too far out for the people that I know who don't have cars. And a lot of the people that I would provide food for, they also are, are so ill um, that they can't get out of their house. So we want to provide enough food and a way for them for their friends or family to take some food to them. Uh, so a lot of different ways to define that. And thank you for that. So we could all well, have a little bit. Thank you for that. And and everybody, thank you for your comments and your engagement. This is beautiful. Uh, Marikita is saying that Food Healers is uh, doing amazing work. And of course we all echo that. Um, and then we have a comment here about, um, about chilies, um, plant-based chili is a great thing. Um, have you had experience with chilies? Was there? I know that you're looking for recipes that are global, that are are not adverse to any any allergies or religious traditions. So you're you're keeping all that on a on an even keel, so so everybody can participate. But well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jen, and thank you, Peter. I think a plant-based chili, that's a very interesting idea because that is a fun thing to have. Um, and I think you could put a lot of things in that chili. <laughs> and I think if you spiced it up to where it tastes like a chili, I think that might be one of the things we could do. In fact, I'm collecting recipes. So we have the template, but Sometimes people just want the recipe. Tell me how many tablespoons of chili, how many tablespoons of oregano, you know, exactly. And so I want to offer to you, if you come up with a food healer's recipe, a unity stew recipe that you think is just beautiful, send it to me. We're going to we're going to publish some and they'll be different from around the world, you know, different places. But we would love to have those. So I think a, a plant based chili cook off could be very fun. Glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, a cook-off. That's that would be that would be an interesting event for for a, a, a vegan society community event. Or that that's really exciting. That's really interesting. That that'd be fun to organize a, a chili cook-off. Um, and okay, so so then from Deb, uh, we have. Do you have companies that donate produce to help make the stew? Oh, gosh, thank you, Deb, for uh, reminding me. Uh, Sarah out of L.A. had just recently talked with me this Friday about going ahead and asking the farmers at the farmer's market for some of their leftover foods. You know, the ugly fruit, the, the vegetables that are still great, but just don't sell. And so that is definitely a way. That's definitely something I'm going to do. I've already... Um, talked with the farmers about it for another group, uh, immune boosting group that I have. And I will do that. And I will talk with our church people once I get a contact there. I think that's an excellent idea. Now, in terms of companies, you bet. I mean, if you know a grocery that would be glad to contribute. One of the things Sarah was saying, I'm going to pass it on, is she said, you don't ha you can have your sentence down in you know, one sentence. We collect food make food and serve free food. Will you help us? And then when they say, well, how much do you need of what? You can say as much as you want or as little as you want of any of the plants and fruit that you have. And that gives them, they don't have to think, well, she needed 12 of those and we only have eight. It gives them some freedom to participate. Um, so that's one of the ways you can do that, especially if you're going to do it on a regular basis. And we're just kind of getting started here. But um, yeah, I think that's a great idea, Deb. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, now, some group, the UK group, they got grants. And so we, we haven't done that as food healers. We are really thinking, uh, you know, if one wanted to do that, that's a that's fine. <laughs> Uh, here I I'm I excuse me I'm um, I'm looking for uh, well we have a form that we'd like to have people fill out. Um, tell you what we're doing is we're in process of of uh, creating 
a community with with our passion pods and and it's there's so much passion around this and everybody's expressing so so much passion around it we we hope that with our community as well as on climate healers we can have these kinds of conversations ongoing and we can have a repository for all the resources for the menus for the ideas maybe even even have some sample letters of how to solicit donations and and uh, food from different companies and and talk to to other kitchens how do we put together a plan for how can I approach a, a local local uh, food kitchen or or uh, a, a church that has uh, has a program to feed people how do we approach them let's let's find these tools let's pull them together so all of us as ambassadors as we go through our day maybe it's not our primary objective or our primary passion but we may run across an opportunity to share this information so that's our mission our mission is about bringing together about empowering the grassroots and the, the grassroots ambassadors, people who are plan based, to spread the word in every every opportunity we have. So, please keep an eye on on our work uh, as we're going to uh, launch our community. We did that health and and uh, support the uh, the uh, uh, food healers group. I'm sure we'll have a pot on there with food healers. Yes. Hopefully, with we'll, <laughs> with, with yeah with Rebecca and um, uh, okay so Jen says just so you know Peter sorry for the confusion I am on a joint Facebook with Don however I'm Jen or JJ <laughs> well yes uh, no confusion Jen I, I I appreciate that you're here and I I know I've seen lots of great stuff from you guys and and I know a lot of people would would love to follow your work and and support what you're doing so uh, I'm I was kind of tempted to to ask if that was one person with multiple personalities or 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 what but I I'm that's too silly I I love what you guys are doing and and your passion and your work reaching out so yes you're welcome JJ yeah thank you and thank you and hello to Don I wanted to say a little bit more about um, some of our countries are very poor they've been through wars um, they they have struggles with supply chains so we we can't limit if you can't get all of those nutrients you have to get the basic ones and so what we did in ethiopia last year uh, a couple of times was we got the foods that the basics you know the, the lentils and the grains um in ethiopia right now they're short of grains so we're gonna have to do what we can do and um and so I just wanted you to know that I'm aware that there are struggles in different neighborhoods and different countries. And that's why it has to be a locally initiative. It can't be me going someplace else. It has to, we have to have somebody in that area who is willing to work toward this. And then we can support each other. All of us can support each other in this. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Um, Anybody else have questions uh, that we can uh, we can address here? I I know uh, Rebecca BJ, you you guys are doing amazing things, and I would, of course, uh, Salish Dr. Rao. He's he's an amazing leader, and uh, you know this being just one of his many projects. So if you're not familiar, and and I can't believe that. Well, I know I shouldn't say I can't believe it. I know there's a lot of people. Who, who haven't heard of him yet and and uh, but have been touched by him I think um, when I tell people that he he's executive producer on cowspiracy then then so many people who who weren't familiar with his name that they'll, they'll connect them so uh Salish dr Rao he's he's done so many amazing things and uh, definitely climate healers is is at the core of it uh, you know what rebecca if you want to take a moment he's he just released a new movie can you can you talk for a moment about that um let's see are you talking about the um the land of ahimsa yes yes the land of ahimsa is um groundbreaking and that it is all about a woman who lives in houston uh, of Indian descent 
who decided to go to India and see, is it really the land of Ahimsa, which is love and respect for all life? And, and of course it's not, it could be, but it's been shown, it was shown here in our little town. It's won an award from a London film group. It's won best documentary. It's won best science. And it is really impacting people. Dr. Rao is in India and he has been there uh, talking about climate change and getting more and more uh, requests to speak and showing that film. And also there's a new film uh, called Makadu. And both of those address how dairy is a major problem. It's not a minor problem. It is a major problem to climate change and to uh, love and kindness to animals. And so people are making changes all around. As soon as they see that, they go, no, I cannot be a part of that. And so it's been been fabulous. Yes. And I have some of our team who's who's supporting this work is is in India and and they rave about how well it's been received there and 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 Dr. Rao everything he's doing he's he's so well followed and and appreciated and and growing a movement just in India I mean he's doing it globally he's doing a lot in the United States but from what I'm hearing he's he's rallying a huge support in India which I'm really, really glad to know. Yes, I want to say that you can you can watch it uh, yourself by searching Land of Ahimsa, and that is A-H-I-M-S-A, Land of Ahimsa. You'll be able to find it. You know, it's um, it's the, it's the it feels great to be serving food to people and having fun and knowing that we're creating a new uh, positive earth, but it's also our whole food system is is messed up and it's based on destruction and so this we can't wait for somebody else to design a system this is a system that where we share what we have and we care for people and so if, if it's in place as things change you know we're all more secure and happier <laughs> absolutely well bj are you uh how expert are you at at the food system, and can you talk a little bit about about what really runs the food system? Because I I know I've had some people I've told told them about how important being plant based is uh, for world hunger, and just simply the the um, the formula, the translation that takes seven pounds of grain to get a pound of meat just just in itself says that, boy, we could feed everybody if we weren't if we weren't uh, abusing cows and pigs and chickens. Uh, but and and they'll say something about, well, there's political and power struggles and there's there's so many other layers to it than than the than saving the food, being able to have the food. Can you talk a little bit about what goes on on, on that level that people may not know about? Um, there is a documentary called Eating Our Way to Extinction, which I highly recommend. And it does show some of the behind the scenes things happening between animal agriculture and our government systems and our industry systems. Um, what I know is that, according to the IPCC, almost half of the land on Earth, almost half of the ice-free land on Earth, is used to feed animals. So if we're feeding, if we're using half of the Earth, clearing it, growing food to feed those cows, sheep, goats, uh, all kinds of animals, rabbits, then that land could be freed up. And I also know the statistic that 85% um, of what humans eat right now is already plants, already plant-based. It's the other 12% that is meat, dairy, and eggs. So from that 12%, we clear half of the land on earth because we want it. Our system is set up so that the very wealthy, the, the, the few of us can have anything they want at any time they want. And to make that happen, you have to be 
uncaring about the people that are doing it. If it means you work all night, three shifts, um, if you if you die, if we have to transport people here to get that done, what they want are the foods they want any time they want it. And that's not an equitable system. And so if we have food and we share it, that's a whole nother system. And so it just doesn't make sense to continue in the system that we are in. It, it's going to lead to, um, well, to those to not have it anymore because we believe in infinite consumerism. We believe that we can just take and take and take from the earth, clear all the forests, kill the oceans and not have anything left. And that that's not uh, that's not something that we really we know is good for the earth. And the other thing that we have seemed to be demonstrating that we believe in is uh, supremacism. Power makes right might over right. And so we see this in the food system, those who have get and those who don't, don't receive. So that's why I say this is, uh, serving food wasn't something I automatically wanted to do. But when I see how connected it is to so many things, it now is what uh, the major thing that I'm working on. Well, hope that well, Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, so we've we've cleared a, a huge part of the Amazon for that. I, I mean, that's that to me is is a crime against Mother. It's it's a crime against Mother Earth, against Mother Nature. It's it's, it's amazing. Yes, it is. And I tell you what, it's not just the Amazon in Nicaragua. They clear forests to raise beef to put on it grass fed to sell it to the United States. So we're clearing forests everywhere. I think uh, Dr. Rao said it was um, an acre a minute at the Amazon. And I don't know if that has changed, but uh, that's that's a lot of clearing. And we also clear with fire, which not only uh, adds more carbon to the atmosphere, it's, it's just a uh, habitat loss. And we're also losing our wildlife. You know, the World Wildlife Fund, their their numbers show that by 2026, we won't have wildlife vertebrates. Now, we want to change that. We have to stop. Uh, see, they've been keeping track of this data since uh, 2012. They do ver uh, vertebrate populations. Well, they study a lot of things, but the vertebrates, they've noticed that would uh, we would lose 3% every couple of years, another 3%, another 3%. Well, we've lost 70% of wildlife vertebrates that we since we had since 1970. So in 1970 we had this many and we've lost 70% of that now. Now we don't know yes. how we're losing the populations but we, uh, I mean specifically but we know we're losing their habitats, we're eating the animal, you know, we're destroying it. So we've got to turn that around and this according to, you know, systems analysis uh, changing our food system is the, the place to begin. Absolutely. And of course, uh, as Deb mentions, there's uh, there's an effect on water. Uh, yeah. What was it? Uh, and, and I'm going from memory. Tell me if, if I'm way off. But I think I heard somewhere that it takes 2,500 gallons of water to get a one pound of meat. Yes, that is uh, that is true. Uh, it varies from 14. It varies 700, depending on where you are. But yes, 2,500 it it uses so much and it also uses fossil fuels. And then of course our oceans, you know, um, we, we want clean, healthy oceans. Well, you can't continue to add pressure to the devastation of the ocean by taking out uh, sea life and changing that, that whole system. So I don't know the details about the water. I, I sometimes, I used to have a chart uh, this was one way to in, in, involve the community at a festival. It would be a, a wheel that you could see one corner of and you would spin the wheel. And you would guess how much water does coffee use? How much water does beef use? How much water does this, that, and the other use? And so people would guess first and then see what it was. And that was a good way to uh, get people involved. I don't have those numbers now in, in my mind, but you're right. It's a, it's a whopping lot. <laughs> Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, yeah, there's so many resources that I'd I'd love to to make it easily available 
kind of get it at everybody's fingertips so that if we have an opportunity to to take a table at a at an event or an opportunity to present to some kind of a social group, a local group, whether a church or an organization that that we're, we're prepared to do that. We the, I know these resources are available, and and certainly when it comes to food and climate, uh, your organization has has produced so many of them, and. And my vision, my hope is that that we all know that it's available. We all use it when appropriate, and and so that we can go through planting seeds for it that will help inspire hopeful curiosity. Um, yeah, um, it's a horrible vicious cycle, says Deb. Yeah, it, it is, and, and it's time we turn it around, and it's it's taking all of us and taking our focus and efforts to to start educating people and so we need to we need to inspire hopeful curiosity we need to get people hopeful that we that for all the damage that's being done to to the climate for all the starving hungry people uh there is a solution and and finding these solutions you know deb i heard this and it's been a while since i heard it and it's it's kind of a real strange comment but see if you have any response to it i heard somewhere that that more people die and die from food rather than lack of food. So more people drop, die from chronic diseases caused by by the wrong foods uh, than actually from starvation. And that's that's just amazing because so many people are die, dying from starvation. And and so it's it's the food and it's about the healthy food. So it's so important that that we do have the healthy food and uh, yeah. A any thoughts on that? I think you're right, uh, Peter. I read recently that something had changed. The number of deaths has changed. It used to be just uh, starving and heart, heart attacks, but I, I don't remember the exact number, but I know that our chronic diseases from what we eat is impacting the uh, northern countries immensely. And so you're right. It's the food system once again, and that awareness. It's mm -hmm. it's in that awareness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think would be some strategies? I hear so much about about the food deserts and the inner cities, and where people don't have access to to healthy foods. Um, are are you looking at initiatives specifically targeted there? I know, I know what you're doing generally will will certainly help in in that. But is there any specific initiatives to to target food oh, deserts? Oh yeah, so thank you so much. There's a woman who started a chili. It's called Chili on Wheels, and she's in New York City, and she has a cart, and she moves that cart around. It's full of food, and it is delicious, healthy, plant based food. And she has spoken at our conversion. Uh, there's a woman who started a vegan food bank. I think they're only open once a week, something like that. But vegans uh, and non-vegans come and volunteer and help with that. Uh, I know for me, a friend of mine, uh, Kim, uh, sorry, Kimball, she and I just cooked some uh, beans and cornbread and we drove to where there were people living under the bridge and just did it that way. So we just came up with something that was before food healers. But so, yeah, we, we are very concerned with people and the food. There's a group here in town called where we thrive and they weren't providing food. They're providing the basics like toiletries and diapers and things like that. And so I'm going to work with them to see, can we provide food? So people need the basics, but when we're providing food, here's the thing uh, that we want to, that we want to keep in mind is the food needs to be as good as if a celebrity is coming over to eat it. That's what LA is like. It's got to be delicious, you know, out of respect for everybody uh, to come and serve that delicious uh, gourmet, if you want to call it that, or basic plant foods to you know, the best of us who are now in houseless situations or are food insecure in those deserts. So there's also another thing going on, and you can look this up. It's, um, I don't know if they call it open refrigerators or 
free, free food and refrigerators. So outside a community center, somebody will set up a refrigerator and put plant-based foods in it. So they'll put produce in there and then people can come and get the food. I haven't, uh, I've talked with people about it. Uh, haven't seen yet how we can do it here, but I know a lot of people have a lot of ideas, you know, and when we get together and talk about these, um, you know, it's wonderful. And in fact, I want to thank you for speaking at our uh, vegan convergence of the peoples. And I'm hoping that, 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 that all of you will be able to join us because there are a lot of connections that way and we get inspired with new ideas just like we do with your we did it dot hill well thank you so much for that um yes i i look forward to to the next one and have been participating and watching them for for quite a while at this point and they're they're amazing amazing people such amazing energy and such wonderful information uh yeah it's 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 awesome go ahead i just thought of somebody one of the speakers uh keith i can't think of his last name he's going to be speaking it's he's called uh, hip hop is green and he provides gardening for students uh, free food. He takes them to farm sanctuaries. Uh, he's a he's a powerful force in um, helping people move forward. So he'll be one of the speakers next at this next one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, excellent. Uh, well, such amazing information, and thank you so very very much for this. Um, and thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting us and i so love collaborating with with you and and climate healers and food healers uh so many wonderful things happening the energy the synergy is phenomenal and for me personally i i thrive on that and and that's my passion and i love being part of it so thank you so very much for for all that you're doing um and with that let's see uh Deb, um, medications all have terrible side effects, of course. Oh my goodness, so much. There's so much, there's, there's so many reasons to be plant-based. It's it's incredible. And and we are so passionate about finding, finding ways to inspire hopeful curiosity. And that's our mission, that's what we're about. We're, we're here to collaborate with everybody from the perspective of grassroots ambassadors, from the perspective of the consumers who are plant-based, because what we're looking for is to, to bring together uh, the knowledge, the, we're, we're a, a learning and knowledge community. So bring together the knowledge to, to curate the resources so we can go through our lives, whether we're going to a doctor's office or, or see see a daycare center or or a food kitchen whatever it is and we we probably all have dozens of opportunities every week to 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 plant some more seeds and not necessarily that we're going to convince everybody immediately but if we just plant a seed and then somebody else plants a seed sooner or later people will say wow i keep hearing this maybe there's something to it so i'm curious and that's that's what we're all doing and so thank you thank you for all you do rebecca and thank you everybody and uh please subscribe to the youtube channel please check out uh climate healers and food healers and sign up and get involved with them and uh we did that health watch for our new community with the passion pods and and we'd love to know what your passion is and join join the passion pods and let's together raise the energy raise the awareness and so that we can all have a healthy, happy, well-fed vegan world. So with that, thank you, everybody. It's it's time to sign off. And I, I Rebecca, I, I love it. I use this to sign off with people all the time and everybody loves it. I introduce it and I tell them that I got it from Climate Healers and that's Namaste Vegan. And that's that's the secret handshake and and love love what it all creates. Thank you again, Rebecca. Thank you everybody for joining us and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.